<laughs> All right, we've got with us Brian uh, from Brian Insurance. We got Brad and Sonia, and uh, what have we got today for our um, our big insurance? Well, we're going to talk. About, sorry, did I cut you off? No, no, go okay, for it. Okay, um, this has come up a lot. It comes up at least once or twice a week over at our office, um, and it's talk, we're going to talk about reading your contracts, your master service agreement, your lease, anything that when you go into an agreement with another party. That you have to sign um, it's super important to read that and to let your insurance agent read the insurance requirements before you sign it uh, super important it sounds obvious to do but um, a lot of times people don't read them is or, this a kind of equivalent when you hear a radio ad at the very end of the no this this is a contract between you and another party that specifies the the operations of each individual mm -hmm and the requirements they have. A lot of times they have specific insurance requirements before you even get on location or even take the job. And most of the time, they'll just pull out the little section that looks like a certificate and send it to us and be like, hey, this is the insurance. We're you're like, yeah, there's a lot more to that. You need to send us the whole contract because they like to bury very odd and specific requirements in those. Okay, when we hear odd and specific, this is like, Okay, you can go out and do the job, but don't bring M&Ms or something. Oh, no, no. <laughs> My, one of our favorite ones is a sand hauler, mm -hmm. hauling sand. And in their MSA, in their contract, they're required to carry a million dollars worth of cargo coverage. Hmm. Yeah. So. And that's some stuff that you got to redefine. Print yes. And find out. Yes. Because yeah. if be, something's not covered, then they can. Well, this it. would be one of those things is, okay, Covering a cargo policy for sand for a million dollars, there's no financial responsibility. There's no, there's not enough there to even justify that. But they're having to cover it because they signed the contract. If they had read the contract prior and understand the requirements they needed before signing, they could have renegotiated and brought that down. Instead of a million dollars, they could have got 500000 250000 even 100000 which would have saved them money in the long run on the you know, on their insurance and been able to cover it properly. Now, just using this as an example, this is not what I'm saying is going to happen, but let's say you got an event like, I don't know, where you have uh, people shooting cannons, you know, like a <laughs> crawfish and cannon thing uh, coming up. And let's say that you park your car like in the path of this cannon going off, you get your windshield blown out. Uh, oh, gosh. Is there like a... Well, I'm uh, yeah. Is there like an exclusion saying, hey, don't park your car in front of... Well, this is a whole, whole different subject. Okay, all right. Not, well, I just changed. Yeah, because nobody's, none of, no, the attendees aren't signing a contract to go out there. Okay. Right. We can talk about that, but it's all That's a whole different completely off okay. topic. I got you. All right. <laughs> yeah. We'll wait. Just trying to figure it out. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so you're going to go to, let's, let's use this for example. Mm -hmm. You're going to lease, uh, you have a business, and you're going to expand into another town, so you're going to lease a building in another town. Right. You're going to buy, you're going to lease. Right. So they give you... So I'm renting out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They give you this lease to sign. And I'm not even talking about the rest of it, right? We're just talking about the insurance requirement part. Right. Uh, there's a whole lot of other stuff that you might need to have your attorney read or whatever. The insurance requirement has... Sometimes it will have things in it that don't make any sense or are very vague. And once you sign it, your negotiating power is gone. Oh, gotcha. uh, One that we saw the other day it wants you to carry property insurance with a deductible that is with a reasonable deductible is what's, what they said what's a well, reasonable deductible what's reasonable <laughs> to the owner of the building might be five hundred dollars and what's reasonable to the person leasing the building might be five thousand dollars so but once you sign it then you're kind of at their mercy right because you've agreed you've agreed yeah. and um and also whether you provide the insurance or not, you've agreed that you're you're going to. So, uh, whether there's insurance that's going to cover these things or not, it doesn't. It, you're still on the hook for it. So right. So go ahead. And there's several other coverages out there that we have found in MSAs and contracts that are very odd. Um, some of my other ones that we've run across is pollution coverage mm -hmm. for people that carry pollutants. Okay. They have but they're required to carry it. So when you are covering these people and you're getting your insurance and you're like, hey, I'm just a standard contractor, and next thing you know, you're having to carry a million dollar pollution that runs through your umbrella, and you have no exposure to that. 
So this is an extra expense that is unnecessary that you should read these contracts before signing them so that way you can get these pulled out. Uh, others are like action over liability without employees. If you don't have employees, there's no need to have action over. It's just an extra expense. Others are workers comp without employees, which is weird, but if you know ahead of time what you're getting into, you can prepare for these things. Because you can have workers comp without, without employees. So as an insurance agent, right. what you're actually doing is you're kind of reading through this stuff and presenting it to your customer saying, hey, this is what you're looking at here. So we'll let you know before you sign this what you're dealing this with. This is what they're asking for. Okay. This is what you have now. You know, this is what you would need to add. These are some things you might ask some questions. My favorite thing uh, is I, I see some, some contracts, especially construction contracts with really old terminology. Uh, it's like the contracts were written in the 70s or whatever. They never updated them and they're asking for things they don't exist anymore on the, in the insurance world. Wow. So, and, and, you know, there's, I could go into some details, but it doesn't matter. It's just, and so, you know, it's important. It's super important. And like I said, and like Brad said, once you sign it, you got to do it. So watch what you're signing. Right. Ask questions. Find out ahead of time. So that way you won't be taken by surprise in case something let your insurance agency those insurance requirements and I still say you probably need an attorney to, depending on what kind of contract you're entering into wouldn't hurt to have your attorney look at the whole thing because there's some stuff in there some of those MSAs that we see where they put everything all the liability mm -hmm. back on this person that's a subcontractor for the company wow so the customer really wants to shoulder the load a lot oh of absolutely yeah they're trying to pass as much on down the chain as they can so that they don't have the they be in the larger company larger that's hiring these contractors. Yeah. Wow. So. All right. Well, folks have questions, comments, or need to know something, how do they get a hold of y'all? You can call us at 940-549-2525. Come see us, second floor Sierra Bank building in downtown Graham or online at www.brianins.com. And that is Brian with the line. And you've been in business for over hundred years, so you know what's going on. Yes. So we're celebrating all year. That's right. Get her done at Brian Insurance.